Welcome into Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein, and we are going to touch on some more Black Mafia family news. And uh, everybody knows that uh, Demetrius Flannery, Big Meech, the uh, most influential, iconic African-American crime lord in history, probably, um, whose rise and fall is being um, chronicled in a hit television show right now on Stars Network, produced by 50 Cent. And it just came out of prison in the last couple of days, served 20 years. And everybody knows about uh, Meech and BMF uh, in Atlanta in the 2000s. And there was this nexus point between you know, hip hop and the drug world and that, that's all true. That all happened. But I want to give a little context. Uh, you know, I love that word. Uh, a little background into BMF in Atlanta, Big Meech, how he got down there, how he took over. But, you know, for the headline here, I would say how the early era BMF, before he was even called BMF, in Atlanta was directly tied to primetime Deion Sanders and Dominique Wilkins, who at the time were the two you know, faces of, of pro sports in Atlanta in the late 80s, early 90s. And then, you know, something that was, I don't even want to say underreported. I don't think it was reported uh, that both Dion and Dominique were pretty much exiled, for lack of a better term, uh, or vanquished from Atlanta uh, per their own professional sports leagues, allegedly, uh, at the urging of the DEA, allegedly, um, to move them out of Atlanta after a lot of this, a lot of this, this nexus pointing, um, which was the early era BMF guys or what became BMF, um, investing money into nightclubs with Dion and Dominique, very popular nightclubs. And there were some murders. We're not saying that, you know, Dominique or, or Dion had anything to do with those murders. They didn't. But uh, the group that they were um, in business with did. And one of those murders was of a uh, innocent woman named Sarah Toker. And this all came out at, in a trial. Dominique and Dion both had to testify. And then within this first, the, the, the same couple of weeks in early 1994, Dominique Wilkins is kind of unceremoniously shipped out to the Clippers, which was like NBA Siberia back then. And uh, Dion was traded from the Braves to the uh, Cincinnati Reds, and he went from the Falcons, because we know he played both sports, um, MLB and NFL, and went to the San Francisco 49ers and ended up winning his first Super Bowl ring. But uh, so this this whole story really starts back in 1985, before the Flannery brothers were even out of high school, and the first Detroit dope bosses came to town, came to Atlanta, left Detroit. It was a very crowded drug scene in Detroit. And uh, a group uh, from Detroit's North End, led by the Kingsley Walker brothers, uh, D Dennis and Derek Kingsley Walker, uh, came to Atlanta in the summer of 1985 and planted a flag. Uh, they brought uh, Jesse Ferguson, a guy they brought with them, Julius Klein, who they call Tiny, um, came with them. And they linked up with a, a, a drug boss in uh, Atlanta named Andre Willis. They got a front man named... Uh, James Mason, who became kind of another guy that became, you know, the face of the of the nightclub business uh, in, in the ATL. And uh, they started dealing with a lot of drugs and they started opening a lot of nightclubs. And these nightclubs uh, were these were the hot spots uh, in, in Atlanta in the in the late 80s and in the 90s um, before everybody started to know about Big Meat, before Big Meat even came to town. Um, this was the group that eventually became Atlanta BMF or the first kind of dirty South BMF franchise. Um, but before they were that, they were the Kingsley Walker crew. 
And uh, Dominique's was a, a, a Dominique Wilkins's a nightclub downtown, very popular. VIP Club, Parrot Lounge, The Phoenix, Tracks, Zazu's, uh, Diamonds, Diamonds and Pearls, The Warehouse were all places that were owned by this group. Um, and Dion Sanders then uh, opens his own club. Uh, and Dominique and Dion actually paired together with their uh, a club together called Club 21. Both of them wore jersey number 21. I think it was either I think it was in Marietta. Um, but as soon as Dominique realizes who he's in business with, he gets out. He taps out. Uh, I think he sells his half of that of that one night club to Dion. Uh, club Twenty One becomes Dion's Club Twenty One or Twenty One Club Dion. Dion's Twenty One Club, um, and then Dion ends up walking away from the business deal because uh, he's not getting paid. They're they're basically stealing money from Dion. They both had to go to uh, court in nineteen ninety four, right before they were, you know again, unceremoniously dispatched from Atlanta, uh, a place that they were both so synonymous with, um, they had to go to court and, and explain this. So things start to kind of unravel in 92, 1992. Uh, Julius Tiny Klein, who was the McKinley, or sorry, who was the Kingsley Walkers kind of mouthpiece on the street, a guy that kind of did their talking for them, um, in Atlanta, was known as very flashy, very boastful. Uh, he's murdered in a shootout in Detroit in the summer of 1992. November of 92, right after Thanksgiving, Sarah Tokar is murdered uh, on contract from her husband, Fast Freddie Tokar, who was a prosecutor with the, the, the state, uh, became a criminal defense attorney, started defending some of these guys, and then got in business with them. Uh, was worried that his wife knew too much about his shady financial dealings and um, she was murdered. And that's when, you know, for all intents and purposes and for lack of a better term, all hell broke loose uh, and the DEA and the FBI started pressuring the Atlanta Hawks and the Atlanta Falcons and the Atlanta Braves to get rid of Dion and Dominique. Um, and so how did Meech and BMF play a role in this? Well, Meech got to Atlanta um, at kind of the end of the Kingsley Walker reign uh, in the early 90s, was hooked up with some of his buddies, uh, the Valentine brothers who had come and followed Kingsley, uh, the Kingsley Walker brothers to Atlanta. And Amit was spending a lot of time there at that point. Their case ends up with Derek, or sorry, ends up with Dennis Kingsley Walker, who was the boss, they called him the Duke. Um, he flips and gives up his own organization. The Valentines have to go to prison. And this is an opening for Demetrius and an opening to really kind of birth the BMF brand in Atlanta, you know, rebrand the Kingsley Walker crew, the remnants of that BMF. And in the process of that, according to the DEA, according to a confidential informant, Demetrius Flannery murders Dennis Kingsley Walker on the day he gets out of prison in October of 1997, leaving the Weston uh, Peachtree Plaza uh, a welcome home party, going to the halfway house to check in, uh, was killed in a drive-by shooting. CIs told the DEA that uh, a man named Meech did it. And a lot of people in the DEA credit um, Halloween 1997, the day after October 31st, 1997, to be the establishment date of BMF Atlanta. Um, Demetrius was never charged in that. He was eventually charged in uh, the murder of um, Wolf Jones, Puffy, uh, Puffy Combs' bodyguard. Uh, he got off with it uh, with, with self-defense. Um, we know BMF was a relatively nonviolent group. There was obviously violence, but um, in in you know, relative terms to drug organizations or crime, criminal organizations of that scope and scale, there are usually dozens and dozens of bodies. Um, in the case of BMF, there was just a handful. But uh, it's it's interesting to see how prime time and uh, and and the human highlight reel, Dominique Wilkins 
played a role in the early era of Black Mafia family. Please like, subscribe, and share the OG pod. Check out our companion web magazine, The Gangster Report. Go over to our Patreon members only where we do a little bit more uh, deep dives and you get some exclusive interviews, a lot of stuff that we got uh, uh, in the hopper right now. We're going to have a lot of interviews popping up uh, between now and the end of the year, and you're going to get the first look as well as the uh, the director's cut. Um Uncovering the underworld, one city, one region, one story at a time here at OG Pod. I'm Scott Bernstein. Out.